And hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Kent Holstey Podcast right here on KentHolsteyPodcast.com and as well as the YouTube channel. I'm so glad that you decided to click that link and join in the conversation today as we are going to be talking about family. What does family mean to you? Because I know for me, family has been a really important part of my life, and I didn't always appreciate it. I didn't always see the significance of what my family meant to me, but that didn't change the fact that I didn't love and care for them. And the thing is, is what we don't realize, and it's more than just what we call our family as our bloodline. A family could be the people that we work with. A family could be the people that we worship with in church. Our family could also be people that we just are in a community with. That's what this podcast is all about. And that's what we're going to talk about today on this podcast. So stay with me as we get things started right here on the Kent Holsty Podcast. Are you looking to join a good community with people that truly care about your feelings and emotions? Well, I encourage you to check out Kent Holsty Podcast website, where you can find Circle of Friends. Circle of Friends is a place to be a community, but more importantly, a family. This is a page to be supportive by sharing special events that are positive or even letting others pray for you. A place that people can come together without fear of being judged, no matter of race or disabilities. A time to be that person that takes the time to care for others when it's needed most. We are all not just friends, we are family. It's the Kent Holsty Podcast website at kentholstypodcast.com with Circle of Friends. So once again, if you're just tuning in, today's topic is family. And I got to tell you what, I am blessed in my life because I was raised by a family that chose to accept me, chose to take me into their family and love me the best that they could despite my problems, my disabilities, the things that I struggled with, they never failed to make sure that they loved me and they took care of me. And the same goes with aunts and uncles. The same goes as far as my cousins. They've always been there to show compassion and love. And the amazing thing about being adopted is you don't realize it when you're adopted at birth like I was until later on the significance of the power of the word family. Because family is something that we, we take advantage of. We take advantage of the word family because we sometimes don't take the time to really look at what family really means to us. Because it's something that we live with every single day. We don't think about the things that they do. We don't think about the, the, the things that they, they show as far as their compassion. And I get it. Not every family is like that. Not every person gets to experience what a family should be like. And that's what the support. The people that stand by you. The people that that care for you no matter what faults you have. Because unfortunately, there's people out there that live in this world that don't have a good family life, where they come from, from parents that have separated. They come from families that struggle with addictions and, and pain. And because of that, everybody else in that circle feels the effects, the aftershocks, and, and sometimes people don't know how to handle and deal with that pain and those emotions 
of what's involved within that family. People just think that that's the normal way of life. There's families out there that like to take advantage of each other. There's families out there who like to to talk behind each other's backs and create drama and controversy within their own family. There's, there's families out there that don't show compassion and love by, by doing the simple acts of, of giving a hug or saying the words, I love you, and, and showing the compassion of what can come from those words and actions. And that's sad to me that there's people out there in this world that don't know what a true family life is like. I wish there was a way that people could, could see and understand what I went through as a kid being taken care of by not just this family that adopted me, my family, but also the other people in that family, the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents, because I was fortunate and blessed because there was so much love given out to everybody equally. There wasn't controversy. There wasn't finger pointing. There wasn't people at each other's throats. When it came to spending time as a family, we enjoyed it. We were looking forward to it, and we still do. And a prime example is on my dad's side, there was supposed to be some sort of ox roast in Kansas. And apparently it's the oldest ox roast in whatever, Kansas, maybe even in the country. I don't know. <laughs> all I know is that all of us cousins, all of my aunts and uncles were so excited last year to get together and have a reunion. Unfortunately, because of what has happened this past year with the virus, that kind of put a damp on that, and they canceled it. Now, supposedly, this summer, that ox roast is supposed to be happening so all that energy and all that excitement is is there for me because i haven't seen a lot of my cousins for years i think the last time i saw a good portion of my cousins from that side of the family was in 2012 during a family reunion where everybody came to montana and my family has always meant everything to me because that's just how the atmosphere was growing up. That sense of love and the respect that we had for each other. Now, don't get me wrong. I wasn't always the best cousin. I wasn't always the, the best nephew. The best grandson. I made bad choices. I said and done things that I, I really regret because I hurt my family many, many times. More than what I wish I did. I, I, I love my family. And I wish I could go back to those days where I made those poor choices because they didn't deserve it. You know, the... The one memory I have of me being that miserable kid was one summer I didn't cause problems, I didn't do anything, and my aunts and uncles came up to me before we left to, to leave Kansas. They said, we're proud of you. This is the first summer that you didn't cause any problems. And for the longest time as a kid, I kind of took that as an insult because I just felt like, wow, thanks. But now that I'm an adult, I realize that they were encouraging me and they were giving me props for something that, quite frankly, was quite rare to happen. It was the love and the respect that they were giving. 
yes, it may have not been the best way or whatever for it to be said or whatever in my mind, but in their mind, they were doing the right thing. And after thinking about it for many, many years, and now that I'm an adult, they didn't do anything wrong. They were just bringing to my attention the fact that I actually was being appropriate. That I was actually being the child that they knew I could be. And yes, it may stink that I had to, to feel those emotions, but I deserved it. And sometimes within our family, we don't realize the things that we do, we deserve sometimes. Sometimes we deserve that tough love where we get kind of 86 out of the family for a little bit for us to realize what we did wrong. Now, keep in mind, my family would never 86 anybody, and they didn't. They never secluded me or threw me in some dark part of the old ranch house. I <laughs> never happened. They never tortured me. They, no. The only thing they did torture is, is chores. <laughs> and as a kid, we all think chores are terrible. Oh, my gosh. But they're not. They teach us responsibility. They teach us that this is how life is going to be. Life isn't all about fun and games. Life is about working hard. And that working hard teaches you that in the future when you do get a job, your hard work eventually pays off. The hard work that they engraved into your mind of how life should be is something that you utilize and you, and you take advantage of every single day. That's what being a family is, is we learn from each other. Now, granted, for me, my family were a bunch of farming families. Some were teachers, but a good portion of the family were farmers. My grandparents were. Both sides of the family were farmers until they retired and they moved into a, a, a town where they didn't have the responsibilities. But their kids ended up taking those responsibilities and taking over the farms nine times out of 10 on my dad's side. Now on my mom's side, they all went off and, and did their own thing. But besides the point, living on a farm, you learn the life lessons. You learn what being a family is all about. And I don't know about how you were raised I don't know what lessons you learned out of your life, but I sure learned a lot. And yeah, I didn't take advantage of those life lessons until much later in my life. But the fact still remains is they were taught. They were there. And I appreciate them. So in the comment spot today, if you feel comfortable, you don't have to, but if you feel like it, talk about what family life was like for you growing up. What lessons and morals did your parents teach you about being a good family? Now, if you didn't have those good experiences, share what happened in your life when you didn't have that. What did you feel like? Did you see other families that acted differently? And how did that affect you? Okay. Because I, I know there's plenty of people out there that listen to this and they're like, oh, I never had a good family life. And I'm sorry to hear that. But in all reality, right now, you do have a family. And that's us. The listeners. Me. So... Whatever you're feeling, we can feel the words that you say and describe, and we can comfort you. 
That's what this is about. It's not time to bash anybody. Because just because some people had a good life growing up doesn't mean that that makes me or anybody else better than anybody else. It just means that it's not the end for those who didn't. You have a family now with us. You have a family with us that cares about you. And you can think, oh, well, you don't know me. That's impossible. We don't have to know you. We are called as Christians, if you believe, that we are here to love and to treat others as we would want to be treated, correct? So being a family is exactly that. We stand by each other. So let's talk more about this when we come back as we talk about families today on the Kent Holsty Podcast. Have you seen the Kent Holsty Podcast website yet? If you haven't, now's a good time. It's all at www.kentholstypodcast.com. It's more than just podcasts. There's interviews, blogs, sports talk, the corner ropes, circle of friends, and so much more. So what are you waiting for? Check it out today. It's at www.kentholstypodcast.com. Join the community. All right, so on today's podcast, we are talking about family. And like I said at the top of the show, uh, family to me has always been special. Um, just recently, I lost a family member to a tragic heart attack that was unexpected. And I didn't know very much about him. Uh, this was from my birth side of the family. And I've talked to him, but I didn't have that very close relationship. And I just wish that I spent more time getting to know him, talking to him, because from what I understand, he was such a great guy. And I think a lot of us who have family... And we come from those situations where you're not close. And when the unfortunate situations happen where a family member passes away, it can be hard. It can cause a lot of regret and pain because you just wish that you could have done more. That's what family means to you is that you would have taken more action. And it's funny how we always come up with excuses as to why we, we put it off. And those reasons later on, when it's too late, are the exact reason why we feel so bad. I don't know about you, but I try to live every moment of my life to the fullest. I don't like leaving things to question. When I believe in something, I push for it. And I think that's the thing that we fail to do a lot when it comes to our families. We don't believe in our families enough to, to push as far as we can go. Because sometimes being a family is a tough subject for us especially when you, you've come from situations of divorce. When divorce happens, you have a whole different outlook on the word family. Because sometimes during divorces, it's not as bad. There's those, those couples that choose to separate but be civil. But unfortunately, there's situations where there's people out there that have to deal with the fact that one person doesn't want to be civil. One person doesn't want to work it out to the point where, yes, the marriage didn't work, the family life didn't work, but 
They just don't want to communicate. They don't want to try to see what happens. Maybe the relationship wasn't a good thing, but maybe your friendship will be better off as friends. And even if it can't be as much as friends, at least you can be civil. Because the hardest thing about being a family is communication. The hardest thing about being in a family is the respect that you have for each other. Because sometimes as, as people change and grow, Sometimes you, you see things that you just don't like. Sometimes within families, there's situations that happen to a certain person that causes strain within the confines of that family. The roots of that family tree begin to come apart. And what used to be a well-nourished family starts to wither and starts to crumble and fall apart. And that's sad. Why does there need to be so much controversy, so much hate between family members? I just don't get it. And for me, I don't understand it because of where I come from as far as being raised in the family that I was. And maybe if you've done more research or you've been a part of this same type of thing, maybe you could explain it as to why it's so difficult to understand. Is it because... You just feel bad? Is it just because of the fact that you just don't know what it's like to be a part of that type of situation? I, I just... I think there's a thin line, though, where it becomes a discussion of fact and then it becomes a discussion of excuses. And why do I say that? Because I think a lot of the time when we have these situations that we're a part of, unfortunately, where there isn't that strength of that family being strong together, we come up with excuses as to why we think or why we know things can't be better. I don't think people take the time to take that first step because everybody is on pins and needles thinking the worst is going to happen if they step up and say something to try to try to change it. I don't know about you, but in order for our community and our world to be stronger, there has to be that ability for all of us to come together as a family and be respectful and kind and decent to one another. And I think a lot of the problems and the issues that happen with families is there's not enough forgiveness. There's not enough of people that are willing to forgive and forget. I think a lot of families hold a lot of grudges and I don't think they know how to cope or to get past it. So in those cases, where do we start to work together to try to change that? Or is it too difficult for that to even happen? I don't know. That's why I wanted to talk about it. That's what's so amazing about this podcast is it gives the ability for people to join in the conversation and kind of give their insight. Maybe you're a family therapist or a family specialist, right? And you've studied family 
reactions and lifestyles and all that stuff. And you have an understanding as to why people don't take those right steps to become stronger, to become closer, so they can feel loved and they can feel like they are accepted. I think that's a powerful thing if we could come together and figure that out. I think it would be even more special if people could come together and be open and honest with their feelings and their emotions instead of keeping it balled in. Because I could have been that person that chose to keep in my own little miserable world and didn't talk about my feelings, my emotions, my thoughts but I chose to be open. I, cho I choose to be that person that shares my thoughts, my feelings to other people in the family because I want them to know how much I value them. I want them to understand how much they mean to me and how much they have impacted my life. When I come back, I'm going to talk about one specific family member who really has made a big impact on my life and what they mean to me. Don't you go anywhere. Did you know on the Kent Holstey podcast website, there's a place for you to buy products that can help you look and feel good, but not only that, live a positive, healthy lifestyle. It's all on the Positive Lifestyle by Holstie page on the Kent Holstie podcast website. I encourage you to check it out because there's some great products by Q Sciences as well as Herbal Life. So check it out today. It's at www.kentholsteepodcast.com forward slash Positive Lifestyles by Holstie. All right, so today the topic is family. And we've gone all over the place as far as this topic is concerned, but I really want to get to the best part. You know, on my dad's side of the family, I really became close to one of my uncles. And I think a lot of it is because we stayed at their, their house a lot more than anybody else's house during the summer, like we did. And my uncle taught me a lot of lessons in life. You know, um, he was there for me when I got into my car accident. And um, it was about the time of Thanksgiving. And he drove a milk truck across from Kansas, uh, the north part of Kansas, to uh, California sometimes. And um, after my accident, it was about the time of Thanksgiving, and he picked me up in Wyoming, where I was living at the time. And I've never been in a semi-truck for a long-distance haul like that going back to Kansas, and uh, it was quite the ride. I love spending time with my uncle because he was willing to listen, and he was always there for advice. My uncle is such a kind-hearted guy. Does a lot for the family when it's needed. And the thing I, I appreciate the most about my uncle is during that time, he taught me the, the life lesson about working hard. We all have issues that we struggle with, with pain. We might have an injury, but that doesn't stop us from what needs to be getting done. And that's our responsibility. So in the midst of a busted up shoulder, 
kind of rehabbed it by <laughs> chopping lumber and and stacking it and all that stuff for near a, a fence that I think was a tree that had fallen or whatnot. Um, but it just taught me a lot of about you know responsibility, doing what I had to do to live a life where if things bring you down, that doesn't stop you from what you need to get done. And that's a lesson that I'm still trying to work on even today. And I think the life lessons that we learn from family members are so valuable. And that we should take them to heart more. You know, um, The, the the thing about this uncle is as I can come to him and I can talk about what's going on with my life. And by the end of the conversation, I know that the way he looks at me hasn't changed. My uncle is an incredible guy. And I wish that other people out there could have an uncle like mine. And it's not to say that any of my aunt or uncles aren't the same because they are. It's just like I said, I, I spent more time with my uncle than the other uncles and, and aunt. And, uh, They're all at the same value as that one uncle. Because, yes, that uncle had a lot more memories of, of life lessons and, and talking and hanging out. But I've had that same experiences with my other family members. And I think that's so cool. I think that's so unique. What does your family mean to you? Why is your family so significant in your life? What family members have impacted you the most? And do they know how much you value them? If there's problems within your family, what can you do to resolve them? Why is it important to you that those struggles, those disagreements need to stop? And what can you do to make sure that your family life at home is where it needs to be. How much do you value the relationship of the family that you have within your wife, your husband, your kids? What do they mean to you? And what are you going to do differently going forward that you haven't done up to this point? What are you going to do to, to show them and say to them that you haven't done? And what do you think that's going to do to change the future going forward? We need to think about these questions. We need to think about how much we value our family. Now, the reason why I haven't talked about my kids is because we already talked about that in a prior podcast. We know where I stand as far as our kids, but if you have kids in your family, that should be your most and biggest thing that is important to you. 
your family. The things that you do, the things that you say, the relationship that you have with each and every person in your household can make a world of difference. If you're not focusing on your children and taking interest in them, if you're not spending time with your spouse and taking interest in them, there is no family. That's the harsh reality of all this. So change that today if you're one of those people that lives in a household where there is nobody being a family. That the only time you're a family is when dinner or lunch is called and you come at that one brief second to come get food. And then you disperse. That's not how a family is. The best thing that you can do for your family is to have a table to where you can sit down together and enjoy your meal and talk about your day and show interest into one another. You know, my aunt from my dad's side taught me the word joy. And we've talked about this before. Joy stands for J, Jesus first. O, others second. Y, yourself last. We need to think about our family. God should be the center of our home. God is the reason why we are in existence. Our family, others, they're the main focus around Christ. They are what's important. They are what, what motivates you. They are the reason why you wake up in the morning, or they should be. If you don't value your family today, then you need to start valuing them right now. It's never too late to change that. Hey everyone, I just want to take this time to thank you for tuning in to today's show. Without your support and watching these videos, this podcast wouldn't be where it's at today. And the same goes for the website as well and the YouTube channel. So to help me out even more, if you haven't done so yet, please like share, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And don't forget to ring that bell so you can be notified when a new amazing content comes out. Also, don't forget to check out all the other social media sites as well and like, share, and comment, and subscribe there too. It all is being a part of this community where we can come together and show that we care for one another so we can motivate and encourage others. So thanks again for tuning in, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the show. I don't know about you, but family is so vital. And if you're one of those people that are listening right now that hasn't had that experience that hasn't had the uh, the capabilities of understanding just how special a family can be when you're standing close to each other you have that you have that here and i'm not just saying that there's plenty of people who are followers who are a part of this community that feel the same way. So whenever you post something, you're not going to be criticized. You're not going to be looked at in a weird way. We are all human. We all make mistakes. 
But the best part of being a family is regardless of those mistakes, those bad choices, we are always there for each other. So as we depart from this podcast today, and you guys go on to doing whatever is left within your day or night, I want you to truly think about this podcast and what we talked about today about family. Because it's important. Your family is what teaches you life lessons. Your family is what motivates you to be at your best, to represent your name So in the future, when you have kids, they can continue the legacy that your family has set up. So the question may be, how can I set up a legacy for my future family if there wasn't really a good situation before? How can that be a positive thing moving forward? How can we grow from that and separate from that? Well, first of all, you can never truly separate from something that's been bad. It's always going to be there. So there's no changing that. But the best thing that you can do is make sure going forward that those life lessons that were there from those unfortunate times are what's there to motivate to never get to that point going forward. Never getting to that point where there is a divorce. Never getting to that point where there is abuse in the family. Never getting to that point where there's alcohol and drug use within that family to deal into quote unquote cope with the situations there is always a way to build and move forward from unfortunate times it's just that you have to take those right steps you have to believe in yourself that it is possible to grow and to move forward and the best thing that you can do is to seek someone who can guide you do family counseling Go to a a church and talk to a, a pastor who can give you advice from a Christian standpoint so you can grow and move forward as a family. If you have more tips, this is your time. Put it in the comment spot so people can learn of ways to become a stronger family. The other thing is, I want you to take time to think about the family members that have really impacted your life in a positive way. And I want you to either write a letter or get in contact with them via a phone call or in person or through a video conference call and thank them. Thank them for what they've done for your life. Tell them how much they mean to you. You might be surprised what happens after that conversation. If you don't take the time to have appreciation for others and to express that, nothing's going to happen. They might think that you're taking advantage of them. They might think that you have no respect for them. But you coming out and saying something that might shock them about how much they mean to your life could make a huge difference. You never know what might happen. So take that chance. Take that opportunity today. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait till next week. Don't wait till it's too late. Do it today. And as always, think and be positive. Do what you can today, not what you can't, to create a healthy family life. Because I believe in you. Don't you think you should too? And if you see someone who served our country, whether it be military, police, fire, or medical, 
whatever they have done for our country, take the two seconds that it takes to give an elbow and tell them how much you appreciate them. You never know how much they might appreciate that one random act of kindness. Do it today. And as always, thank you for listening today to today's show. Make sure you check out the Can't Holstie Podcast website at can'tholstiepodcast.com. If you have any ideas for future podcasts or if you need a prayer, uh, shoot an email to me at can'tholstiepodcast at gmail.com. And until we talk again, thank you for listening. Be safe and God bless. Thank you.